welcome to Studio 5. Zach Williams, Garth Jennings, and a look at national champions are all on tap this week, and we don't want to waste a minute. We begin with two-time Grammy Award winner Zach Williams. He released a Christmas album with some historical significance, and as you can imagine, he's already at work on what's next. In this Studio 5 sit-down, we're taking a look at what was, what is, and what's to come from Zach Williams. This is this, this is history here. It's it's insane. Like who would have ever thought we'd be recording this Christmas record at Fame Studios? I mean, man. One, two, three, go! This is insane. It's all gonna come together here in a little bit. I don't wanna take those lights down off the tree. Pack up the stockings and pull down the reef. I don't want Christmas to win. The album um that's out now, it was recorded in Muscle Shoals. Yes. Tell me about yeah. that process and that studio and, and being able to do it there. Well, uh, the studio in Muscle Shows is just, it's legendary. I mean, it's an iconic recording studio. It's called Fame Studios. And it was, uh, I mean, it was kind of where Aretha Franklin found her sound. You know, there were all kinds of artists in the late 60s and 70s and 80s that recorded down there. You know, Wilson Pickett was one that I, I've always loved his music. And, and so the idea for this record was, how do we go down to Muscle Shows and recreate those sounds and try to make it sound like it came out of that era of music and kind of keep that heritage and that sound alive? I, want Christmas to end. I love the, the, the title um, track for the project yeah, because that's how I think we all feel. Tell me about I Don't Want Christmas to End. The approach was how do we write an original song that feels like a classic, yeah. you know, especially if we're trying to recreate a record that sounds like, you know, songs from a certain era of music. And so uh, that was kind of the original idea was how do we make this sound like it came out of that time period, but at the same time, feel fresh and feel new. And for me, Christmas is, you know, it's a time of year where for a lot of people, it's the, it's the one time of year where we're always together, you know, with your family. And it's also the one time of year that seems to come and go quicker and quicker every year. You know, it's like you, you wait all year to get to Christmas Day, and then as soon as it's over, the next day you start hearing people go, you know, it's going to be here before you know it. You know? <laughs> and, uh, and, that's, and, and I've heard that all my life, but as I get older, I realize that's it's the truth. And, uh, you know, the idea was just, you know, let's just slow down, you know. Leave the wrapping paper on your floor a little longer. Uh, don't take your Christmas lights down the next day. Uh, and just spend some time with your family and slow down and enjoy the holidays. And, uh, turned out, I I'm proud of it. Mm -hmm. I, I really like it. I like it too. What's this last year been like for, for Zach? You know, uh, this past year has actually been a really good year. Uh, coming out of, you know, a, coming out of a year or a season of life where we were home a lot and then getting a chance to go back out and work and, and tour and, and be with our friends and fans. Um, you know, we were fortunate enough in the early spring of this year to go out and play about 50 of these drive-in movie theater yeah. dates, uh, which was which was really cool, you know. Uh, I would say if I see another one, it would probably be too soon <laughs> because it was, a, it, was a, it was a little rough, you know, but it served its purpose, and we were grateful for the opportunity to do it. Um, and then, you know, the summertime, uh, we got back out and played festivals all summer and fairs, and it felt pretty normal. And, uh, you know, as long as we've been able to stay healthy this year, things have felt like they're, you know, back to normal and moving along. And so uh, it's been a great year, um, especially coming out of, you know, where we were in 2020. So you've got the Christmas project done at a famous studio. You began the year with the Grammy. What are you looking forward to in 2022? 
you know, I'm looking forward to getting back out. You know, it's going to be a busy year. Uh, I've got a headline tour starting in March. Ann Wilson's going to be on that tour as well. Um, um, you know, just looking forward to, to seeing what God has for 2022. It's going to be a good year. We'll be drawn. Zach's current project is called I Don't Want Christmas to End and we can all stretch the season just a little bit longer by continuing to listen to The Great Project. Still ahead. So I'm personally asking all players in Monday's national title game to join me in this boycott to demand that the NCAA will recognize players as paid employees and not student athletes. National Champions is a fictional take on an issue ripped from real life headlines. As an artist, you know, anything I've done, I've, I've always aimed to, to uh, be a part of art that speaks to life and that speaks to society. And, um, and you know, anytime you can, can do that through art, it's a beautiful thing. You know, I don't claim to be a, a, a politician or an activist or anything like that, but, you know, I like to make, you know, stories about, you know, important subjects that speak to the world and speak to the people and the times we're living in. But a word of warning, this film contains adult language and is for mature audiences only. What happens to all of the other sports that are not men's football and basketball when they start paying you? Life is better with a good night's sleep. Get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep. As the world watches from the outside. It's a big diplomatic tug of war here in the Middle East. Go inside the story with Jerusalem Dateline. Israeli archaeologists are talking about a discovery that could change the thinking about the Temple Mount. Join CBN Jerusalem Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell and get the biblical perspective on the events shaping the world. What starts in Israel then ends up going to other places. Watch Jerusalem Dateline Friday night at 8.30 on the CBN News Channel. Life, it's meant to be lived fully. Jesus said it, I came to give you life, life to the fullest, life in your family, life in your finances, life in your body, mind, and spirit, life in your every day. At CBN.com, we're taking what Jesus said seriously. We're here to help you discover life. Life. Live it fully. CBN.com. Welcome back to Studio 5. It feels like a page ripped from the headlines. College athletes go on strike, seeking pay and benefits like health insurance. But in this high stakes drama, a coach's legacy is on the line when his star player launches that strike. Here's a Studio 5 look at national champions. We're still 24 hours away from the national title game. Wolves quarterback, LaMarcus James, should be the best quarterback to come into the NFL since Patrick Mahomes. National Champions is a story about a, the college football national championship, Division I, and it is set 48 hours before the game begins. We're live. He's about to declare that he's going to boycott the championship game unless the NCAA changes the rules over amateurism. His argument is not for him and for the big stars who are most likely about to get very rich to get richer. It's for the people on the team who, you know, uh, aren't going to go on to play in the league. And we out there every single day, blood, sweat, and tears. There was really only one quarterback for me, and it was Stephon James. We're just happy with a free education, right? Nice free suit. Anything I've done, I've, I've always aimed to to uh, be a part of art that speaks to life and that speaks to society. You ain't got no medical. You got insurance. He risks it all 
to take on a system um, for the better good of everyone else, not even himself. It starts right now. It starts right here. It's about the, uh, the vision of an individual to make a difference for the majority. For those of you who were thinking about boycotting, you've made your point. They are going to have to change. We got to take care of our student athletes. They leave it all out on the field. You know, if I'm going to go out there and, and, and risk it all, you know, what, what security do I have? Change is coming. Meaningful change. Trust me on that. What the, what the story does so well and, and what drew me to it is that, uh, you know, the ambiguity in there. I mean, Lamar LaMarcus, uh, you know, whether, whether you agree with his stance, he does some underhanded stuff to get there. And this is your time to finally capture that national title. Do not let LaMarcus rob you of your legacy. It's a fundamentally a story about inequality and in, in some ways injustice in the college sports ranks. Glory is ours. Take it. They're laying their bodies on the line. They're sacrificing uh, opportunities. And they're the only ones that are not compensated for that other than the scholarship that they receive. This is a story of bringing to the fore that that system is probably antiquated. This is the home of my best friend and teammate, Emmett Sunday. Tomorrow he'll play in a game that'll gross over a half a billion dollars. But Emmett won't see a dime. This film doesn't make the decision for anybody watching it. And it gives everybody's point of view. His football days will be over. Zero compensation, zero medical insurance for all the injuries he sustained. I don't want to be an actor who, um, or a human who just stands on the sidelines and isn't a part of these conversations and these important stories. and. Um, this one in particular, I, I think, is a conversation that needs to be had. So I'm personally asking all players in Monday's national title game to join me in this boycott to demand that the NCAA will recognize players as paid employees. It uses the question of whether college athletes should be compensated to explore a lot of the fractures that uh, permeate our society today. Coach, I think it's best if the NCAA took the reins here. LaMarcus is a good person. So many times things are bigger than just the moment. We have to be active far beyond, you know, just the moment. And I think that that's what LaMarcus is starting in this. He's, he's starting something that is hopefully going to be a trend and helps, you know, plant the seed in the minds of other athletes to be conscious and to be aware and to speak up for what's right for them. Four players just tweeted, we're in, with the hashtag fix the system. It ain't just two of us no more, and that's a fact. Injustice is injustice, no matter what color, no matter what creed. This, this, this film is going to make people think. God is with us. He says there is nothing to lose. I am here and there is nothing to fear. With that, we've reached our moment to share a story in pictures. Here's this week's Studio 5 snapshot. Look into my eyes. Do you see fear? You come at me with sword and spear, but I come in the name of the God of Israel. That's a hint of what's to come next from Angel Studios, the creators of the Chosen series. It's an animated epic account of King David, and it's already raised millions of dollars to bring the production to the big screen. The creators of Netflix series The Jungle Beat, Phil and Jackie Cunningham, are behind the project. And this preview in pictures is this week's Studio 5 Snapshot. Coming up next. Yesterday. Meet the man who brings Sing's sequel to life. Does this awaken a child in you in any way? It doesn't awaken it. It's just never, it's never gone to sleep. <laughs> Director Garth Jennings joins us for an inside look at the movie and the music. <gasps> I remember. On October 1st, 1961, history was made when a tiny station began transmitting the first signals of the Christian Broadcasting Network. CBN, the Christian Broadcasting Network. And now, a new era has begun with the all-new CBN News Channel. Just moments ago, the Iron Dome intercepted an incoming rocket right on the Gaza border. And ministering in this area, spiritual warfare is definitely involved. A 24-7 news network, bringing you the news you want from a source you can trust. In Kenya, 40% of the medical services are actually provided by these Christian hospitals. Let's talk about the economy. Believers here are joining together 
to win people to Jesus Christ. All your favorite shows now in one place. Go to CBNNewsChannel.com to find out how to get the CBN News Channel on your TV all day, every day. CBN News. Life is better with a good night's sleep. Get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. Life, it's meant to be lived fully. Jesus said it, I came to give you life, life to the fullest. Life in your family, life in your finances, life in your body, mind, and spirit, life in your everyday. At CBN.com, we're taking what Jesus said seriously. We're here to help you discover life. Life. Live it fully. CBN.com. Welcome back to Studio 5, the final show of 2021. Time sure flies. Last week, we sat down with the stars of the hit film Sing 2. This week, we're sitting down with the man behind the film, who is also the voice of one of my favorite characters. British filmmaker Garth Jennings directs the film, and he's the voice of the feisty Miss Crawley. Hey Guys, this is the entertainment capital of the world. I'll give you three weeks to get this show up and running. Johnny, you're going to be working with the number one choreographer in Red Shore City. Yuck! That is rubbish so bad! What's the burden and what's the blessing of a sequel to such a popular animated film? The burden and the blessing, <laughs> they're probably joined. So what's the show called? What's it called? Um, Gunther. You, uh, you want to uh, tell Mr. Crystal what it's called? Uh, because the burden is, well, you've got a, a, a tall order. The first film was very well received and people really loved it. So the burden is, can you make it better? But that's always a blessing as well, because what a wonderful opportunity to try to make something even more entertaining and more wonderful and rich and emotional than the first film. So they're sort of combined. The answer is, I know it sounds like a cheat, but <laughs> no. it is true, the two mesh. And um, so though it was hard, uh, and probably harder to make than the first film just because of the scale of it um, in every respect. It was when it started to you know, come to life, it was very re rewarding. I'm really, really thrilled with the final result. Yeah. Jason! That volcano should have been finished yesterday! We're on it, Miss Crawley! You made me! Being a terrorist! Taking from the top of this time, put a little juice in it with that! And you are the voice as well of Miss Crawley. Yes. Wait, where's the koala? Who are you? I'm in charge, that's who! Now get your tail to wardrobe, sweetheart! Where's Garth and Crawley? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just the voice. I, I, it started just as a, a kind of joke voice that I was doing when we were, you know, just roughly sketching out the film in the first, first movie. Um, but it stuck. It was one of those jokes that just stuck, and I love, I love being her. And I love writing her parts as well, because I can always do something really different with Miss Crawley than I can do with anyone else. You and your dumb friends better not be hiding in there. What are we gonna do? Guys, we just gotta be brave now. What lessons, if any, do you think adults can take away from this story? Lessons? I don't know. I, there's all kinds of stories in there. There's all kinds of lessons in there. Every, every one of these characters, because you're kind of following about five characters. They each have their own story, their own lesson, as it were, a moral tale. But I'm always, I'm always a bit reluctant to say, here's the lesson you're gonna learn. I, I love it if people discover that. It was important that these stories resonated. It was important that we were saying something. It's important that Buster's journey isn't just some spectacular thing that means nothing. It's like that it's universal, that being told you're not good enough to where you wanna be, you go where you wanna go, that could apply to all of us. And that was an important, that at the core of it was the most important story for me, like being told you're not good enough. Does this awaken a child in you in any way? It doesn't awaken it. It's just never, it's never gone to sleep. <laughs> it's, it, you know, it's really weird. I'm still doing what I did at 11 years old. And I'm 49 now, so there's clearly something wrong with me. But I was always making little stories and films and plays and film, you know, sort of drawings and cartoons and stuff with my friends. And I've just not stopped yet. So 
I, I think that's what's happened. It's not so much awakened, but just not gone to sleep. When did this life for you or this passion awaken in you? Do you remember when? I was like, I just, I, I don't know. I mean, I do remember being five years old and going to see Star Wars and being like, you know, there's a Wookiee. And you're like, wow, you know. Um, uh, but I don't know if it was then or just, just everything. Like, well, I have very funny parents and a very funny sister. And so I was around funny people making stuff and we weren't in the entertainment business. There was no one in the entertainment business for a billion miles in every direction. But we were just a funny bunch of people, you know, and, um, and there was no, at no point did anyone say you can't do that. I remember being a kid and thinking I could make zero gravity by pumping my bedroom full of air. I just thought it needed more air to make zero gravity. <laughs> and I remember my mum walking past with like a wash basket and asking me what I was doing. I'm like making zero gravity. But instead of saying that doesn't work, she was like, okay, and just carried on going. <laughs> I think that's probably, she didn't realize, but at that point she was sort of sending me down a path of like, I'm just gonna do this. I'm still, still have that set. I don't, I don't still pump my bed full of air. <laughs> I worked out that's not how gravity works. I've kind of grown up in some respects, yeah. Oh boy. You have no idea what you're getting into. Whatever podunk town they crawled out of, that's where they belong. I got you. We cannot let that bully steal our hopes and dreams. Guts, faith, these are the things you need now. Good evening. It is my pleasure to present to you a brand new show featuring the return of Clay Calloway. Sing 2 is in theaters right now. It is something for the entire family to enjoy. Just moments away. I said go, tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Friend of Studio 5, Zach Williams returns with a final word for the show and the year. Life is better with a good night's sleep. Get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. I'm Ephraim Graham, and this is Studio 5. Cruise with me as I discover the good things happening in the world of music, sports, television, and movies. The fact that Ryan Coogler was going to be directing the film, I knew that something special was going to happen. We'll chat with artists at the forefront of entertainment and explore the connection between popular culture and faith. I asked my pastor, I said, well, does that mean I'm supposed to be a preacher? He says, well, no, you already have a pulpit. Wednesday night at 8.30 on the CBN News Channel. Remember for a moment what it was like to be a child. You believed every story you were told. You saw a world full of endless possibilities. What stories will the world's orphaned and at-risk children believe? We believe the Bible tells the only story truly worth believing. We believe that every child should have the opportunity to dream, the chance to take challenges and turn them into possibilities, the chance to stand on the promises of God, to recognize their place in the greatest story ever told. They have their whole lives ahead of them. Theirs is a world of endless possibilities. They are looking for a story to believe. We will tell them that story. Will you join us? Come home to the Southern Gospel Station from CBN Radio. You'll enjoy a rich Southern blend of bluegrass, classic gospel, and Southern Gospel favorites. CBN Southern Gospel, available now at CBNRadio.com. Welcome back to Studio 5. This week's soundtrack is one of the tunes from Sing 2. Take a listen and hear why you 2s your song saved my life is what's playing in my ear. You're looking for a miracle The kind that science can't explain The man you carry in your heart Is only comfortable when he's in pain Are you a stranger in your own life? Why are you hiding i 
just me You know your song Saved my life I don't sing it Just so I can get by Won't you On that musical note, we are almost out of time for this edition of Studio 5. So let's take a moment to see what we're working to bring you next week and in the new year. Finding the banter between Clint and Kate. Where are you? Oh, relax. I'm taking the elevator. Came pretty naturally. We're going inside the Marvel Universe. <laughs> they can bicker and have you giggling behind the monitors, but then you see them in action sequences and it's just lightning. For a look at its latest series streaming to Disney Plus. We certainly get our butt kicked all over this show. I enjoy the humor and the tone in the twists and turns that it takes. This is Hawkeye. Definitely not this one. You don't have to say definitely like that. It's been such a wild ride. You have no idea. This is literally just the bare bones of what this is going to be. Holy Your problem is branding. No, my problem is you. Please join us next week and next year for that story and so much more. Before we say goodbye here, we want to give the final word of the year to Grammy Award winning singer Zach Williams. What keeps you hopeful? For me, just I, I guess it's my faith, you know, more than anything. Um, I've had to I had to really rely on that this past this past season, you know, just just knowing that in the end, I'm not, I'm not the provider for my family, for my band, for my crew, for anybody. You know, God, God is that, and He's always been that. And um, you know, it's it's, it's honestly kind of like the song "There Was Jesus." You know, when I look back on my life 20 years ago, um, I was I was running from a calling, I was running from everything, um, and I couldn't see Jesus in any of the things that I was doing until I gave my life to Him, and I looked back on those those times. Um, now that I'm living for Jesus and now that I have him in my life, I can see him in the middle of everything. And so I feel like, you know, we're all going to look back on 2020 and see Jesus was right there working all, all things for the good, you know. And so uh, I think for me, just relying on my faith even more than I ever have in, in my past is, is what keeps me hopeful. Zach Williams, that's a powerful word and a great final word for this edition of Studio 5 and this week's look at Uplifting Entertainment. Until next time, make time to uplift someone around you, and then please come on back and see where Studio 5 takes you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching.